Good day class. I hope you are still doing well even at this time of pandemic. Hopefully, you will take this opportunity to continue learning at home. For today, let me introduce to you what this course is all about. First, let's look at our objectives for this lecture. For today, we will define the science of mechanics and its fundamental principles. We will review some physics concepts that are essential to understand statics. We will also tackle about the concept of force and force systems. We will examine vector operations and apply it to solve for resultant of forces using parallelogram law and triangle rule or triangle law. Now, Let's proceed to learning first what is mechanics. Mechanics is simply defined as a science that describes and even predicts the condition of bodies either at rest or in motion under the action of forces. Although mechanics is just a branch of a very wide scope of physical science, the scope of mechanics itself is still large. That even mechanics is also divided into three main branches. The first one is rigid body mechanics, in which our subject statics is under. If you can still remember during your physics class, a rigid body is a body which is capable of withstanding any possible deformations under the action of forces. Just like this rock, in the picture in which in in most cases or in practical cases the body can be idealized as rigid next main branch is mechanics of deformable bodies which contains your advanced subjects strength of materials in here bodies are no longer assumed as rigid lastly we have fluid mechanics, which is also your advanced undergrad subject to be taken during or after statics. Fluid mechanics is about study of fluids at rest or in motion. Take note that even these three main branches are further divided into several sub-branches. With all these several sub-branches, it will be better to see all these different studies under mechanics by looking on the following diagram. As you can see here, mechanics is divided into these three main branches and further divided into sub-branches. Although all these sub-branches might be a bit overwhelming, just do not mind yet for this subject all those studies that are under this under these two main branches here on the left and right because as future engineers it is very important to focus first to focus at the moment on the basics of mechanics which is the mechanics of rigid bodies and specifically statics anyway what is statics is what is that statics all about Statics deals with the analysis of the effect of the forces applied on a particle or rigid body at rest. In fact, we witness statics from time to time in real life. Those things that are not moving relative to us. Also, knowledge of this subject enables us humans to further advance the technology and quality of our life. Such as... This huge rocket of SpaceX that is standing evenly on the ground. This firm assembly of different machinery parts of Omniprocessor invented to convert human waste into potable water. And another one is the luxury offered by Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world that is erected with enough stability. Actually, it will be very hard to survive 
every day if all the time everything keeps on moving a life where things have no stability indeed statics is very fundamental for us engineers to solve real life problems whether in a particular industry or even in our community now that you have some idea about what mechanics and statics is let's have a quick review of some of the physics lessons you encountered before which are very essential to solve static problems vector and scalar quantities to differentiate them let's consider the following figure as you can see in the right side speed is a scalar quantity since scalar quantity is described only by magnitude while the weight of the apple is a vector quantity since it has magnitude which is indicated by the scale and direction which is downward for all gravitational forces on earth to further see their difference i made the following table in where the first two rows are pretty much self-explanatory but looking at the third row this emphasizes that scalar quantity can only change in magnitude while vector quantities can change either in direction magnitude or both also scalar scalar quantity cannot be resolved it means that it has no components and vector quantities can be resolved using trigonometry example of scalar quantities are length mass energy and density described only by magnitude while common examples of vector quantities are displacement velocity acceleration and force the same with your physics in the past we will also be dealing with si units or the international system of units and u.s customary units note that this fps means feet pound second which are the basic units of distance weight and time respectively for this system of unit now the following table shows the comparison between the SI and US system of units outlined here are the basic units for each system to be used in mechanics take note of the unit of mass and force for SI the unit of mass is kilogram while for the US it is lag then for force it is Newton and this is the equivalent unit of Newton while for US force is expressed as pound to aid us in solving problems that necessitates shifting of system of units this table can be used so just take note of these conversion factors lastly you might encounter problems with prefixes such as shown in the table problems as a uh, problems such as uh, forces in kilonewton or stresses expressed in giga gigapascals I recommend that before you proceed with the next topic, please review these three tables so that it will help lessen the burden of handling the units in our future problem solving. Now that we have reviewed uh, some of the physics concepts, let's now begin the discussion of fundamental concepts in mechanics. First is the idealization in mechanics. Idealization in idealization in mechanics simply means assumptions that are used to simplify the analysis of the problem without significantly affecting the result one of those idealizations is the particle when we say as particle we mean an entity having considerable mass but negligible dimension the next idealization is rigid body when we talk about rigid body we mean a solid or undeformable body having considerable mass as well as dimension 
So rigid body is actually a combination of several particles in where the dimension is important to consider during problem solving. Considering a particle can be relative, let's refer on this figure because here the satellite can be analyzed as particle to investigate its motion because relatively the size of the satellite is negligible compared to our planet. Another example is a vehicle traveling from one point to another. Here the vehicle can be analyzed as particle if the distance that it will travel is too large, maybe a few kilometers or more, compared to its size. Now for rigid body, let's consider this structural beam of a building. As you can notice, downward forces are spread all throughout its length, which means that the dimension of this body should be taken into account to investigate its motion. Also, you can notice that the beam experiences a slight deflection due to load. However, even with this slight deflection, the beam can still be analyzed as rigid body because the deformation is too small that it can be neglected. In real life, Engineers, for example, civil engineers, follow a national code where it can base its decision whether a particular deformation or deflection is tolerable. Please take note that the definition on what is rigid body is only a hypothetical concept. Actually, no object or body is perfectly rigid in the universe. An assumption of rigid body is only made to simplify the analysis, especially on cases where the actual deformation is negligible. Now, for another example, let's consider the spinning tire. It is possible that we can consider the tire as rigid body if the, if the deformation is very small or can be neglected. Remember always in this subject, we will only deal with objects that can be idealized as either particle or as rigid body. To have some initial background right now on how these idealizations will be applied during problem solving, kindly take note of the following. You can see in this figure under object as particle, you can see that a 100 Newton object is hung with the use of cable wires and pulley. In this case, you can idealize the pulley as a particle by drawing it like a dot at point A and then drawing the applied forces on the particle. <coughs> now for rigid body, the system in this figure contains cable wires, these two cable wires, the vase, the vase, and the rod OA. This system can be idealized, or I mean the rod OA can be idealized as rigid body by just drawing the rod and the forces only. In mechanics, it is not only bodies that can be idealized to simplify the analysis. Reaction forces and applied forces exerted by a body to another body can also be idealized as concentrated or distributed forces. This first example shows a man standing on a plank. When, analy when analyzing the forces exerted on the plank, you may idealize the weight of the man as a concentrated force or purely acting on a particular point on the plank. This assumption simplifies the computation 
that might involve calculating the total area of the contact of his feet to, to the plank just to include the concept of pressure. Another similar example is the truck passing on a bridge. The weight of the truck is idealized by these concentrated forces acting on the center of gravity of the truck and on the points of contact between the tires and the bridge. This assumption is also made to simplify the computation. Lastly, we have this lower portion of a steel column in where due to this 12,000 pound applied force, the reaction of the ground is linearly distributed as shown. So this is assumed to be linearly distributed that uh, there is a disregard for any possible irregularities in the distribution. This kind of idealization serves as a great tool to be used when designing structures. So I think that's it for now. Kindly refer to the second part of this lecture in where we will tackle about laws of mechanics for system and vector operations. So thank you class and God bless.